Hello friends, in this video, we'll further see how equations help us understand not just microeconomic concepts, but also macroeconomic concepts. In this video, we will look at the ISLM model. I urge you to read a little bit of theory behind the ISLM model so that you can get the most out of this lecture. However, I would just give you a brief understanding of what the ISLM model does. The ISLM model was actually given by J.R. Hicks. It is a model that helps us determine the equilibrium level of output in an economy and the equilibrium level of interest rate in the economy. Let's say that the consumption equation is given to us as C is equal to 102 plus 0.7y. This showcases that your consumption is equal to 102 even when your income is zero. Again, this makes sense because you can always borrow money when you are out of cash. This part is called as the autonomous consumption. The 0 0.7 over here is what we call as the marginal propensity to consume. This showcases that as our income increases by 1 rupee, our consumption increases by 0 0.7 units. We can always plot this and see how the curve looks like. However, I am not going to go into the details of plotting in this lecture. We have already done this in the previous lectures and I expect you now to do it on your own. Similarly, the investment function is given to us as i is equal to 150 minus 100i. This tells us that investment is negatively related to interest rates and for every one unit increase in interest rates you would see investment going down by 100 units. The money supply is given in the economy as 300. And last but not the least, you are given the money demand as 0.25i plus 124 minus 200i. Now, the IS curve showcases all the points where the goods market is in equilibrium. To solve for the IS curve, we need to solve the equation y is equal to c plus i. We have been given the equation for C as well as I. Hence, we can write Y is equal to 102 plus 0 0.7 plus 150 minus 100I. This is the consumption and this is the investment. Solving further, we can take the 0.7y on the left hand side and this equals to 252 minus 100i. Therefore, we can write this as 0.3y is equal to 252 minus 100i. Notice that it's 1y minus 0.7y which gives us the answer 0.3y. Further, 
दिस इक्वल्स जीरो पॉइंट थ्री वाई प्लस हंड्रेड आई माइनस टू फिफ्टी टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो सिमिलरली द मनी मार्केट इक्विलिब्रियम टेक्स प्लेस वे द मनी डिमांड को इक्वल्स द मनी सप्लाई को In our case, the money supply curve is given as 300, and the money demand curve is given as 0.25i plus 124 minus 200i. Solving further, we get 0.25i minus 200i minus 176 is equal to zero. The equilibrium output and equilibrium interest rate exist where the IS curve and the LM curve intersect each other. Therefore, we can equate the equation of the IS curve with the equation of the LM curve. Solving for both of them simultaneously, we can write them this way. Now we multiply the above equation by two. Our new equation will be zero point six y plus two hundred i minus five not two. If we add the new equation with our LM equation, we get. Zero point eight five is equal to six eighty. Therefore, y is equal to six eighty upon zero point eight five, which is equal to eight hundred. We got our equilibrium output. Now, let's substitute this in one of our equations to get the equilibrium interest rates. Substituting 800 in this equation, we get 0.25 into 800 minus 200i minus 176 equals to zero. Therefore, we can write 200i is equal to 0.25 into 800 minus 176. Therefore, 200i Is equal to minus twenty four. Hence, I is equal to zero point one two. This is the equilibrium interest rate. And now we have both the equilibrium output and the equilibrium interest rate. This means, if your IS curve looks like this. and the lm curve looks like this then the intersection between the both generates equilibrium output of 800 and equilibrium interest rates of 12% i hope you understood how the islm framework works mathematically if not go over this lecture once again That's it from this video. See you in the next one.